Earlier today, SpaceX released a few different angles showcasing the recent hot staging on Flight 9. Included was a view from inside the engine bay of Starship, showcasing the Raptor engine's gimbling along with a few other details. While the flight fell short in a few areas, the alterations to the hot stage ring and planned controlled booster flip were highlights of the launch. Here I'll go more in depth into this mission milestone, the different videos released, FAA status, and more. Starting with the video inside the engine bay, one of the first things you'll notice is the Center 3 Raptor engine's gimbling. Immediately, as the engines begin to fire, they gimbal outwards. Due to the brightness of the engine burn, we can't see them make the initial move. However, soon after, they return to their original position. They do this to direct the exhaust of the engines toward the vents of the hot stage ring. Partly because of this, the three vacuum Raptor engines actually fire first, followed shortly after by the sea level engines. It puts in perspective the proximity of these engines next to the booster. Even still, with the hot stage ring full of vents and the sea level engines delaying ignition and gimbling, this camera angle helps show what the vehicle has to withstand. It also highlights the amount of heat shielding and protection SpaceX has added to the Raptor engines and the attic section in general in order to try and protect various hardware. In the future with Raptor 3, SpaceX is planning to leave the engines basically bare, expecting that moving any electronics and plumbing inside the actual structure will protect them. The other three videos released by the company show the same hot staging but from cameras on the exterior of the ship and booster. These give a much better view of the controlled flip and how it differed from past launches. Starting with a camera near one of the forward flaps, it shows the booster pointing up following stage separation and turning directly back to the launch site. Out of all the maneuvers we've seen the booster make in past flights, SpaceX highlights that this is the most efficient path, and the goal is to use the least amount of propellant possible. In order for SpaceX to control this, on Flight 9, they blocked part of the hot stage ring vents. Switching to a different camera near the booster and pausing the video, you can see the exact section where there aren't holes in the ring. Uncoincidentally, playing back the video, the side where the vents are blocked is the exact direction the booster separates in. In other words, the thrust from Starship's upper stage engines pushed against that blocked portion of the hot stage ring and controlled the booster during stage separation. In past flights, this process was completely random. For example, we can compare hot staging on Flight 8 and Flight 9. Looking at the process from the ground on Flight 9, the booster points up and then right at the launch site for a very efficient path. On Flight 8, however, from a very similar camera angle, the booster points down and to the right. This forces the booster to complete basically an entire flip in order to be on the correct trajectory, using more propellant. On that flight, and flights before it, the direction the booster moved in was purely based on small differences in thrust from Starship's six upper stage engines at ignition. That means a slight timing difference on ignition, or an individual engine producing more or less thrust could single-handedly impact the direction the booster went, and as a result, how much propellant it would need to use. Interestingly, this all comes in addition to the new reveal of future hot stage ring designs and alterations to upcoming Starship generations. Besides being permanently fixed to the booster, the big change with the new ring is how open it is. If anything, that should help relieve some of the stress if any, both engines and various components are experiencing when all six Raptors start firing in a somewhat enclosed space. The current design, which expends the ring, has always been a temporary solution as the goal is to make the entire vehicle reusable. This should not only save weight, but also allow the company to catch a booster and then place a ship on the existing hot stage ring. Looking back at the video, one of the last new angles we got was from a camera at the top of the booster. Again, we see the flip, but this time in the background, you get a great angle of the ship continuing to fire its engines as the two vehicles get further apart. Regarding the new videos, SpaceX tweeted saying, After stage separation, Super Heavy flipped in a controlled direction for the first time. This maneuver requires less propellant to be held in reserve and enables additional payload mass to orbit. It'll be interesting to see how they apply this to the future design with its struts. Even with that upgrade, the change to Raptor 3 should be even more significant. As partially mentioned before, in relation to hot staging and the general health of current upper stage Raptor engines, they feature a lot of added protection and heat shielding. With Raptor 3 set to remove this in the future, SpaceX is expecting some added benefits beyond just weight savings. When talking about this next generation engine, Elon was quoted saying, So if there is, for example, a small fuel leak from a Raptor engine, it will simply leak into the existing flaming plasma and not really matter. Whereas a fuel leak when the engines are contained in a box is a very scary thing. As for the end result of the booster and its explosion, this is thought to have been related to the higher angle of attack on re-entry and not hot staging. In a statement, the company said, as it approached its designated splashdown area, Super Heavy relit 12 of its 13 center and middle ring Raptor engines for a landing burn. Contact with the booster was lost shortly after the start of the landing burn when it experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly approximately 6 minutes after the launch, bringing an end to the first reflight of a Super Heavy booster, they said. Beyond the new videos, yesterday the FAA released an official statement regarding the Flight 9 mishap. 
Here, they're quoted saying, The FAA is requiring SpaceX to conduct a mishap investigation for the Starship Flight 9 mission that launched on May 27th from Starbase, Texas. All Starship vehicle and Super Heavy booster debris landed within the designated hazard areas. There are no reports of public injury or damage to public property. They go on to say, The mishap investigation is focused only on the loss of the Starship vehicle, which did not complete its launch or reentry as planned. The FAA determined that the loss of the Super Heavy booster is covered by one of the approved test-induced damage exceptions requested by SpaceX for certain flight events and system components. The FAA evaluated each exception prior to launch approval and verified they met public safety requirements. As for the booster, the FAA subsequently determined the debris did not fall outside of the hazard area. During the event, there were zero departure delays, one flight was diverted, and one airborne flight was held for 24 minutes, they said. Overall, the investigation was expected after the result as it's obviously important for SpaceX to figure out what led to the loss of attitude control. While in this flight, the vehicle was already on a suborbital trajectory and set to re-enter in the Indian Ocean practically no matter what, on future orbital flights this becomes especially important. As far as how the investigation works, it's led by SpaceX with FAA oversight. Specifically, the FAA highlights that a mishap investigation is designed to enhance public safety, determine the root cause of the event, and identify corrective actions to avoid it from happening again. The FAA will oversee the SpaceX-led investigation, be involved in every step of the process, and approve SpaceX's final report, including any corrective actions. A return to flight is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishaps does not affect public safety, they said. At this point, SpaceX will begin working toward Flight 10. Elon mentioned that the cadence for the next three flights would be faster at approximately one every three to four weeks. This suggests they want to get through the remaining V2 starships as they make a push toward V3. Even still, it's important that upcoming flights improve upon Flight 9. SpaceX still wants to catch the first starship not long from now, which requires both a successful re-entry and heat shield, but also the ability to reach orbit. If that wasn't enough, the company has expressed hopes to launch Starship V3 by the end of this year. That would include the ship, booster, and notably a lot of Raptor 3 engines. An ambitious goal given the time. Over the next few weeks, we should hear more regarding the next flight and possible launch timelines. SpaceX just released a few new videos showcasing hot staging on Flight 9. Here, we not only got a view from inside the engine bay of Starship, but also some of the onboard cameras both on the ship and booster. This gave a much better view of the mission milestone and how alterations to the hot stage ring controlled the flip. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.